Hi, this is David, and uh, I wanted to thank the comment person that said I look like Despicable Me. Now, I don't know who Despicable Me was, so I had to go on the computer. Um, unlike the Mormons, I go to find the truth on the computer. <laughs> I didn't like the truth. I brought my nine-year-old up here and it says, does that look like me? She goes, I ah, just slapped her one. <laughs> yeah, despicable me, Curly Joe, and I can't think of the guy on uh, the Adams Family. I, I look like all of them, I guess. So anyway, um, those are movie stars and that certainly makes me feel well. It's just that many of them have a build that uh, <laughs> is not buff. Okay. The best revenge is to do well. It's going to be the name of this video. And I wanted to just share with you um, what that means to me. When I was uh, in high school, I um, was called in and as a senior. Well, I was called in several times, but this was a counseling call. <laughs> so I go in, I can't think of her name. She's kind of an old bag, about 55 years old. And she said to me, well, what do you want to do uh, after high school? And I said, well, I've been, I've been thinking of going to college. Now, I never saw fat old people <laughs> fall off the chairs laughing until that moment. And I said, what? What? She said, David, if you were the last man on earth, which I'd like to be because I'm bipolar, then I would have to deal with the rest of you. <laughs> you would never graduate from a legitimate university. So I said, well, how about an illegitimate university? <laughs> She's, I don't think that either. So I went home and I, I thought about that and it pissed me off. So I went to uh, BYU and uh, I did graduate from BYU. I keep the certificate or the uh, <laughs> diploma turned to the wall because <laughs> I'm not proud of that these days. Then I went and got a master's degree at uh, uh, Tahlequah, Oklahoma, uh, Northeastern State University. It's right there hanging on the wall. And then I did get um, 28 postgraduate credits at Springfield College in Springfield, Massachusetts. And then I got some a one-year law school and a few extra things. So the best revenge was to do well. The best revenge was to do well. Well, now let's let's go to relationships, which I'm terrible at, but I keep trying. Uh, so anyway, let's say that you uh, get divorced, and your wife says uh, he's a bum. Well, if you are a bum, then just shut your damn mouth and go be a bum. But if you're not a bum, your your duty to yourself is to do well. So she says, well, he's an alcoholic. Well, quit drinking. And then start doing well. And then all the other people will look at her and go, he's not an alcoholic. He's right. You're wrong. You make her look like an ass. <laughs> but if you're, if you're dead ass drunk on the couch every night, people are going to say, you know, she was right to divorce his ass. He's worthless. Well, in our society, we have a, a strange phenomenon and that is that any time someone gets divorced it's usually the man who is blamed it's not always the man many times it, it can be the man but as many times it can be the woman too so one of the reasons I do my videos is to um, bug the shit out of my ex-wives I'm coming up on a hundred thousand hits in less than a year now I, I can't say for sure <laughs> why those hits are there. I don't know if it's good looks. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know if it's personality. I don't think so. <laughs> Is it intelligence? I don't think so. <laughs> I think a lot of people have no life. <laughs> but anyway, I can push that in my ex-wives, plural, faces and go, hey, you know what? You didn't like me, but there's a hundred thousand people who, you know, can tolerate me, and uh, maybe not because um, I don't know how long <laughs> people stay on the uh, on the video. I looked at that once, and I go, holy shit! So I don't look at it anymore. <laughs> but anyway, 
um, they didn't think much of me, and of course, um, I didn't think much of them. I divorced uh, all of my ex-wives. Uh, none of them divorced me. Um, the uh, and, and someone said, well, you know, Sandra divorced you. No, Sandra didn't divorce me. Sandra moved to California, and I wanted to be kind, and I gave her a venue. And uh, I wanted to divorce Sandra, and, uh, but I let her be the plaintiff, and the rest of them I divorced. So anyway, do well. Now, the Mormon Church says when you leave them by excommunication or resignation, which is me, I just resigned. I had a temple recommend when I resigned, and I worked in the temple and whatever. Um, they said, you're going to kick against the pricks. Well, I didn't know who the pricks were until I resigned. It's the big 15. <laughs> it's, the, it's the 12 and the, uh, the um, uh, first presidency. They're the pricks. And I had to kick against them for a little while, but Here's the, here's the difficulty of doing well after the Mormon church. You're living in a cult. You have no social skills. You don't know what it's like outside the cult. You um, don't know what to say, what to eat, what to do. You don't know what underwear to wear. You don't know what's appropriate or what's not appropriate. And so the cult knows that and they know if you leave them you're going to have a hell of a time moving into the real world it's like a rebirth when you're 20 30 40 50 or 60 70 years old it's a rebirth because you're like a baby um the mormons love to see somebody leave the mormon church and then go into poverty or lose their job or get a health issue or just have a miserable life. The Mormons just jump up and down and laugh and laugh and laugh as they see. We stayed in. You're an apostate. You got out. And see, we told you that we're the true church. Well, this is a, a reverse form of uh, validation. Cult members have to have constant validation because they have constant doubts. And without validation over and over, almost daily, they will wander away from the cult. So anyway, um, when you do come out of the Mormon Church, many times you've lost your family, you've lost your grandchildren, you've lost your children, you've lost sometimes your job. Uh, you're not really welcome in the same community, especially if you live in a small town. Um, you really uh, hit the dirt. You really do hit the dirt when you come out of the Mormon Church. You begin to doubt yourself. You begin to go, well, holy shit, maybe they were right. I hate the thing, but maybe they were right. Um, and you struggle. Then you struggle in relationships because when you got married at 21 uh, in the temple, you know, you had her, she had you for eternity uh, until she met uh, Fabio. <laughs> now you're gone. You're kicked to the curb. And you don't know how to date when you're 38 years old. Uh, when you're 47, you have no hair. So you buy a convertible and uh, you drive around and try to look important. And the young girls laugh their ass off at you. The old bags go, hey, hey, he, he's a good deal. Now you go to dances. You don't remember how to dance. You don't remember what to say. And um, you're used to having a, a cult surrounding you. Now you have just real people. And sometimes real people will say, you look stupid. You have no hair. You're ugly. You look like despicable me. Um, it's hard. It's hard when you've lived in a cult all your life uh, to get that kind of criticism verbally and, and uh, psychologically. That hurts. And now you begin to want to drink or take drugs or, uh, you know, have some girlfriends. Whatever. Now, here's what I'm saying. And it's the truth, <laughs> no matter what the Mormons say. And, and I've had to live this. It's taken years and years. God, when I came out of the Mormon church, um, I was a piece of shit. And, uh, you know, my, my mother said, uh, you can't polish shit. <laughs> but now, I'm still shit, but <laughs> somebody's looking at me. So anyway, the point is, it's tough when you come out. Very, very tough. A lot of people give up, and that's where the Mormons get to jump up and down. It's like, he's, he's a failure, he's a failure, he's, he's in outer darkness, he's an apostate, the pricks are getting him. <laughs> Little do they know, the pricks are getting them, but in their mind, the pricks are getting the apostate. 
Well, it took me years and years and years, and uh, I'm still not there yet. There's there's plenty of times that I'll say or do something that normal people go, "Good Lord, what the hell are you thinking?" With I don't know. <laughs> so I've had to learn through trial and error, and that's hard because it's embarrassing. And so um, I'm telling you, from my experience, it takes years to get out of that cult and to get deprogrammed. Now, one of the things here, let me lean up and shut my window because my kids are yelling, <laughs> as usual. Um, take some time and give it some time if you do leave a cult and the LDS church. You're going to lose your friends. You've got to go make new friends. I still don't have, <laughs> I never had any friends ever since I was born, but I have none now and I blame it on the Mormon church. <laughs> I have no friends. I don't like people. Generally speaking, I, they lie, they cheat, they steal, and they want to borrow money or they, they want other kinds of agendas that I don't want to be around. I enjoy just kind of being alone and I go out to Walmart and I look at the, the general public, but uh, you know, when you have 22 kids packed into a, a Walmart cart, you look like a Mormon. <laughs> and when you bend over and your garments are giving you an atomic wedgie, you're a Mormon, and I get disgusted, and I go, hell, I'm going home. I'm going to just shut the door and do my videos when I want. So anyway, um, the best revenge is to do well. Now, I've got to tell you a quick story. Um, my, uh, let's see, I can't remember which wife it was. My third wife, my third wife, Jeannie. Jeannie, so I know she watches this shit, and she hates it because it's in front of 100,000 people. But truth is the truth. Truth is the truth. So, um, anyway, Jeannie was saying when we were getting divorced, um, I said to her a little compliment. I said, look like you're losing a little weight. And you know, when a girl is 300 pounds, it's hard to see two or three pounds off. <laughs> but I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be nice. And uh, she was at that time, she said to me, well, when you're in love, you lose weight. And she had a new boyfriend in Oklahoma, <laughs> where a belt buckle is a second form of ID. <laughs> so I said, well, gee, that's, that's good, because I'm not too intimidated by uh, women. And I would be with my little wife now if she said, oh, I'm leaving. I would feel really bad. But when Jeannie and I were breaking up, I go, hey, you know, if you're losing a little weight because you're in love, uh, that's a good thing. And then she says, well, also, I don't like to have to work. And my new uh, fiance, <laughs> who's a alcoholic, <laughs> she's going from bipolar to alcoholism. So I don't know. Is that a step up or a step down? I don't know. I said, well, I won't have to work. Hey, that's cool. Sound like a good catch. <laughs> well, two or three years into the marriage, uh, I find out through the grapevine because uh, Jeannie is the most secretive. She's perfect as a Mormon. She is so secretive. Um, she's the one. <laughs> beautiful girl. Oh my God. I, I married her when she was, I don't know, 20, 18. I don't remember now. She's a return missionary. But um, <laughs> she hates it when I say this shit in front of everybody. But it's the damn truth. It's the truth. She, she was the head cheerleader of Choctaw, Oklahoma High School. And <laughs> she had a boyfriend. His name was Bo. I don't know if it was Bo Jingles or Bo Jangles. I don't know. In Oklahoma, it could be Bo Bo. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, from 11th grade through high school, her and Bo screwed every day. Every day. And she's a Mormon. And she's a Mormon. So when she was called on a mission, <laughs> it's like nine apostles. Now, I'm exaggerating. I think it was only one. Came down to interview her and said, you know, are you going to quit screwing? Oh, so they, they let her go on a mission. So she came home from the mission and shortly after we got married, she told me, you know, uh, uh, in between our marriage, she was screwing the elders quorum president in the BYU parking lot. Now, this is a return missionary. This is the Relief Society president. So anyway, um, she said when we were divorcing, uh, if you're in love, which she insisted that she was, she was going to lose weight. Well, two years later, 
I look at some of the um, Facebook pictures, and it looks like the Goodyear blimp with damn legs on it and little arms sticking out. She looked like her damn mother, who <laughs> set the world record in Oklahoma for fatness. So I find out she gets her stomach stapled. Well, now, if she's in love, like she said, why didn't she continue to lose the weight? I don't know. <laughs> revenge. <laughs> to do well is the best revenge. Well, she wasn't doing too well. So I found out like a year later that they went bankrupt. Now, I've been really bad with bills. I really have. My whole life, uh, I just have to admit, um, I've been very bad paying my bills. <laughs> I hope no one recognizes me. <laughs> but anyway, um, they went bankrupt. So I had to laugh and say, well, gee, you know, we never went bankrupt. We should have several times, but we didn't. And then um, the next situation was that she had to go back to work. So I'm saying to myself, the best revenge is to do well. She didn't do well. I'm laughing my ass off. She's married to an alcoholic, fat as a cow, uh, a very fat cow and uh, working because her husband is a bozo. And uh, let me discipline my kid. Allison, turn that down, please. She wants to use the computer. Damn, she's a smart kid. So she does shit like that. So I have to hurry up. Get the TV all the way up in that room. Anyway, revenge, the best revenge is to do well. Well, Jeannie didn't do too well. And my first wife, she never remarried. She said I ruined her as a woman. Uh, her vagina fell off uh, in the living room and we couldn't get it back on. So she was ruined as a woman. And then my lesbian wife, <laughs> she hasn't done well either. Um, and I'm trying to think, who's the, oh, oh Carolyn. <laughs> Carolyn, she married the phone man. When he came out to install the phone, he installed more than the phone. He installed himself in Carolyn. And so she didn't do really well. And I haven't kept track of her much. And I'm trying to think, um, uh, oh, Janet. Jan I, I sometimes forget him. I usually have to give him a number. Uh, Janet, she's the one now that is in her 60s. And she was cute as hell, too. God dang, there's some beautiful girls that I married, uh, Janet and uh, Janie and Janice. Um, anyway, um, she hasn't done well either. Uh, Janet, <laughs> first of all, when she divorced me, she married a, um, I don't know, I guess he was some kind of a stockbroker, and uh, he gave her, um, I forget which venereal disease, I don't know if it was syphilis or what it was, but anyway, he gave her a gift uh, that she'll long remember, and then he divorced her ass and didn't leave her any money at all. And so then she decided to marry this other guy, and, and he had been arrested, convicted, and is on a sex offender list as a child molester. Uh, I think his 12-year-old daughter, now this is, this is the story I got, okay, his 12-year-old daughter, in fact, you know, I'm not going to give you this story, because if it's not true, he quit sue me. Uh, but anyway, um, he's a child molester, that's a true statement, and he's been convicted of that, that's a true statement, and he's on a sex offender list, that's a true statement. So, I'm not sure if she did better marrying him, or she should have stayed with bipolar. So, it's taken me a long time. Now, the next part that I'm going to say to you um, is I'm saying it for the purpose of a um, demonstration or as a visual aid. I'm not trying to uh, puff myself up. <laughs> I do that with food. <laughs> and I do it well. I'm, I'm just trying to say as an example. Now there's two ways I believe are good revenge. One is emotional. You can't just count the, the physical things. Anybody can buy a new car. If you have enough money and you rob the 7-Eleven and you buy a car, that doesn't mean you're doing well. You know, so I'm going to break this in two pieces, emotionally and then financially. They don't always dovetail. They don't. You can be doing good and not, uh, you know, having a lot of money and things to do. But anyway, um, Emotionally, I think that you need to find a new partner and uh, get a good one. Uh, my wife 
just happens to be 23 years younger than me. Now my 55 and 60 year old wives, that pisses them off. <laughs> good, good. Okay, and my sweet wife, Mercy, oh God, she's as sweet as can be. Uh, she speaks three languages and um, none of my other wives can hardly speak English. And um, she is extremely smart, unlike my other wives. Sandra's been in this, uh, Sandra, see, I get them mixed up. Shh. <laughs> Mercy's only been in the country, I don't know, four or five years. And in four or five years, uh, she came here, never had seen a check written, never knew there were checks or checkbooks, never had a bank account, and came from a very poor family in the Philippines. Well, in four or five years, uh, she's um, got a full-time job, and she stayed on that job. She's paid well on that job. Uh, she's learned English, and uh, I taught her to drive. Uh, she only destroyed one new car. <laughs> That's all. She's uh, a good little driver now, and she's bought her own home in her name, and uh, she's bought two brand new cars in her name, and we adopted uh, the little kids, uh, Abigail and uh, Allison. So emotionally, my life has basically stabilized. She cooks my supper and breakfast. She's faithful to me. She has a wonderful sense of humor. We go places on her days off. We take the kids. We do some picnics and in the mountains and stuff. We've gone on vacation two or three times. And we're going again next week. So some of you will think I am dead. And some of you will be glad <laughs> to think that I am dead. But be that as it may, I'm a better father. You heard me yell at the kid, okay? In the old days, it was a lot worse than that. I've learned. Uh, this kid is ADHD, and um, she manipulates a little bit, and um, sh she's on medications, etc. So my life emotionally has stabilized. I have a good life, a high quality of life. I, I can sleep anytime I want. My kids are old enough now, and I'm watching them. If I doze off, they're fine. They're fine. We have computers all over the house. We have phones everywhere for the kids. Um, the little one is up here on Netflix all the time. The big one is on her um, smartphone. And she runs track and she plays the piano. And uh, she does basketball and, and uh, volleyball and uh, dances. And it goes on and on. And my life is high quality. I've got air conditioning. I had to put a damn new air conditioner in the house. That was $6,000. That pissed me off. But hey. In the old days, I wouldn't have been able to put it in. I would have just had a, an ice pack. <laughs> That's why I lost his hair. I did not have air conditioning in the old days. Just ice cubes and rubbing the hell out of it. So, the same way with the bathroom. I was pissed off about not having, uh, you know, the two bathrooms. Because I'm getting old and I have to go pee-pee. And uh, we put a new bathroom up in uh, Abigail's bedroom. And that was $8,000. So, thank God. We have two bathrooms. We have a, a refrigerator. It has food in it. And I'm looking out at a beautiful uh, lake and pond that we have and a waterfall. And we have a pool. And uh, we have two brand new cars. My car sits three or four days a week. I don't even go anywhere. I just enjoy sitting here, watching a little TV, making my movies, etc. Anyway, I'm getting off. I want you to understand the best revenge is to do well. So when my ex and the church look at my life I have more now financially than I ever did they'll say in the church see the devil pays well well I'm not working <laughs> I've been retired since I was 48 I haven't worked and now I I can sit and enjoy uh, you know I sometimes sit and listen to the oldies in my chair I have intercoms I can just push and then the, and the kids and everybody I can check on I go over swimming with the kids we go on vacation we just have a very very high quality of life now I know life as soon as I say this you know my head will fall off tomorrow I hope it's this one <laughs> I don't want to be injured seriously <laughs> so anyway um, do well show the church show your exes and show the wives and the children you know I've got whatever ten children uh, that I don't speak to I've disowned because they're such assholes um, and they're saying see dad is going to be a failure he's out of the church well I'm not I have two beautiful children they're both A students uh, Allison gets a few B's now and then and uh, they're not in trouble and they're well liked at school they have many friends 
and uh, they each have their own bedroom. My kids growing up never had their own bedroom. Didn't have it. We didn't have a house big enough and we didn't have enough money. We have enough money now. We're not rich people, but we're, we're normal, average people that I, we can go on a vacation. And, and uh, we've been on vacation, and my kids never went on vacations, the ones that are Mormons. And uh, I hate them, and they hate me. Their asses. Oh, we took one vacation. Now I think about it. We drove from California to Oklahoma. Now that ain't much of a vacation. The only reason I went to Oklahoma is because my wife was from there. And we had a um, uh, Chevette with a back hatch and five kids. We couldn't get five kids in the back seat of a Chevette. We drove 2,500 miles, I think it is, uh, to Oklahoma with the back hatch open and two kids sitting in the back hatch. We didn't have to have seat belts in those days. Well, hell, now my kids ride in the back of a brand new car. They've got their own air conditioning units, their, their own damn computers to play with, and, uh, you know, sunroofs to stand up out at the beach and wave at them and, and pretend that the princess in the parade. And, um, you know, we sleep in hotels. God, <laughs> when I was in the church, we slept in the damn car, seven or eight of us, leaned over, <laughs> sitting up. It was abuse to me. I was being abused. Drive 800 miles and then sit in the driver's seat and sleep. Oh my God, these kids, they have reclining seats, they have heated seats, air conditioned seats. They're living large. They're living large. So anyway, do well, please. And please have patience with yourself. It's taken me a long time, eight, nine years, to get in this position. And every day I am so thankful. You know, I'm all known that I'm atheist. Uh, if there is a Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Uh, if, it, uh, if you're a Muslim, thank you, Muslim. So anyway, um, my computer's <laughs> acting up as usual. So the best revenge is to do well. Thanks.